Is it better to be born rich with below average intelligence or poor with above average intelligence? If we lived in a society that actually upheld the values of meritocracy and equality of opportunity, the answer would be clear. You would choose the natural gifts because they would give you the best chance to succeed. But we all know that equality of opportunity and meritocracy are largely mythologies. And while it makes people uncomfortable to admit this, two recent studies from the United States demonstrate that the children of the wealthy, even low achievers, have better life outcomes than the high achievers from low income backgrounds. Asking why this is the case serves as the goal of this video, but the answer isn't that the children of the poor have genetic or cultural weaknesses that make them less likely to succeed. Rather, the reality is that the children of the rich have greater access to tools which allow for them to mask their weaknesses and highlight their strengths in a way poor children do not. These manifest in the earliest years of education, but the gap grows ever wider as students move into high school, university, and beyond. First, a study covered last fall by the Washington Post made it clear that while there was no real sense that the children of the rich were more gifted than their poor counterparts, they still saw wide gaps in academic and monetary achievement. And as noted on the onset, when you compare the brightest poor kids with the least bright rich kids, the latter graduate from post-secondary education at higher rates. Put another way, among the bright children of poor families, less than a quarter will graduate from college. But whereas this study was largely focused on how genetic similarities between poor and rich children still manifest in great inequalities later in life, more comprehensive is a recent Georgetown University study focused on the American education system itself. Their executive summary paints a bleak picture. Despite the widespread belief that the USA is a society where your effort and brilliance determine your success, they find that the K-12 career pipeline reveals a sorting of America's most talented youth by affluence, not merit. Their data further suggests, in line with the study cited in the Washington Post, that while rich students with below average grades in kindergarten have a 70% chance of being successful in life, the same can only be said for 30% of high scoring kindergartners from poor families. But more than kindergarten, the study shows that the gap grows by the early teenage years. Rich students who have high scores in the start of elementary school are extremely likely to stay there whereas half of early high-achieving poor students will fall back in relation to the general pack. And by 10th grade, just a short while before many start post-secondary schooling, high-scoring poor children are far less likely than high-scoring rich children to have a degree 10 years later, and less likely than even poor-achieving rich people. And even beyond education, the ultimate outcome of one's socioeconomic status in adulthood is determined more by your parentage than your brilliance and achievement. Here, Georgetown compared bottom-scoring rich people with top-scoring poor people and found that by 25, 71% of those rich people remained above average in their socioeconomic status, while 69% of those poor people remained below average. This video clip by Georgetown offers a good example of why this all happens. If you're born wealthy and have high test scores in kindergarten, you're likely to have high scores in high school and be ready for college. But if you're born smart and poor, your chances are slimmer. Half of poor students with high test scores have fallen behind by 8th grade, compared to 1 in 10 rich students with high scores. Consider two kindergartners, one with wealthy parents and low test scores, and one with poor parents and high test scores. Before and during elementary school, one child has access to resources that the other does not. These patterns continue in high school, setting the stage for adult success. The highest performing poor students have less chance of graduating from college than the poorest performing rich students. A student from a poor family who has high test scores in 10th grade has a 4 in 10 chance of graduating from college within 10 years. But a student from an affluent family who has low test scores in 10th grade has nearly a 5 in 10 chance of getting a college degree. So there you have it. When comparing smart children to one another from across income backgrounds, the rich often capitalize on their brilliance, while the poor do not. But really striking at the core of meritocracy and equal opportunity is that high achievement loses out to better connections. This comes in the things the video mentions, like better educational resources and extracurricular activities, but it also manifests in professional networks that make finding and keeping success much easier. So what solutions do they offer? Simply put, Georgetown looks to fixes within the education system to ensure that poor students are given more constant support from early childhood onward, and that they are given a greater sense of their options and possibilities in terms of career and educational opportunities after high school. 
But while all that seems fine and dandy, I don't think it's going to solve the underlying issue, which is massive inequality and the ability to manifest that inequality across generations. This isn't simply about more help being given to poor students, because that fails to recognize that there's an element of class conflict here. People want their kids to succeed and will do what they can to ensure it. Thus, you need to find areas in which well-off parents help their kids outside school and find ways of offering those same things to poorer families. This could be publicly funded extracurricular activities, less discrepancy between schools in terms of resources by funding them on models not so wedded to the average wealth in the immediate community, and of course, free education at the post-secondary level funded by taxation increases on the wealthy. Along this line, more should be done to implement taxation that limits the ability to pass on large amounts of wealth which only serve to perpetuate inequality, and the state of affairs where rich people win either way. This includes not only higher income taxes, but also wealth, estate, and capital gains taxes. Studies like this have gone relatively underreported in the media. Maybe it's because they make affluent and well-connected people uncomfortable with the knowledge that their success or the success of their children isn't really merit-based, and that the poor folks in their community, even the most gifted poor folks, don't have all that much opportunity in comparison. But these sorts of studies are vital because they urge us to collectively ask and answer a question. If we really want a meritocratic society where everyone has equal opportunity, what do we have to do to achieve it? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you like, comment, and subscribe. Consider sharing it around with your friends and family. And if you can, I would love your support on Patreon. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.